Hi guys! Magandang araw po sa inyong lahat. This is Sean from Keep It Up with Sean. And for today's video, this will be the first part of the lecture series, particularly in the field of soil science. And sana um, magamit nyo, nyo ang material na ito for your preparation for your review for the upcoming ALE. So, before we start, let me introduce first. I am Sean. And... Um, I finished a uh, Bachelor of Science in Agriculture, major in Soil Science uh, from the University of the Philippines, Los Baños, Laguna. So that was long ago, guys, 2001. And then after my studies, I went home to Davao and worked in Lapanday Foods Corporation as a research assistant and researcher for four years. So Lapanday Foods Corporation is a banana plantation and uh, my job was mainly to generate fertilizer recommendation for the farmers, for the growers, and for the whole plantation. So, after working for four years, I applied for a scholarship, and I got a scholarship from the Flemish uh, government in Belgium. And I studied a uh, Master of Science in Physical Land Resources, major in Soil Science in Ghent University in Belgium. So, during my masteral, pinagsabay ko din ang aking misteral and that is where I met my husband. So, after I met my husband, since uh, six months before uh, my studies finish, uh, siya ko na meet at siya ka hindi din ako sure kung kami ba ay magkakatuluyan or hindi. I went home to Philippines and then I applied for University of, of Southeastern Philippines. So, natanggap ako doon as a, an instructor wine, instructor, and then I taught there for three years. So, my my first subject na itinuro ko ay entomology, and then later on, I started uh, teaching soil science one and soil science two. And that's how I met... Um, my student, Jezreel Pau, and he requested na, Ma'am, baka naman um, mag-suggest na, may suggest ako na gawa ka ng PowerPoint presentation kasi marami akong mga students na magtitake ng board exam. So, I hope you can find time to prepare a video for their uh, review material. So, sabi ko, aba, na-excite naman ako kasi it was long time ago, uh, I stopped working in University of Southeastern Philippines, USEP, in 2010. And then since noon, wala na, hindi na po ako nakapagturo. So, I, sabi ko nga kay Pao, uh, I'm okay Pao, I'll make time. Hanapin ko muna yung mga notes ko kasi matagal na rin na hindi ako nakapagturo. At hindi ko na rin uh, na-review yung mga materials na pre-repair ko before. So, finally, nahanap ko na rin yung mga materials ko before, yung lecture notes ko. And then, uh, kumawa ako ng uh, video presentation, ng PowerPoint presentation. So, this will be the content of this video. I will be dividing the uh, this lecture to different uh, different parts kasi nga medyo, medyo malaki din yung kanya coverage. So, I hope, review nga to kasi ibig sabihin, review, see again. So, ibig sabihin na na-encounter nyo na po to yung, yung mga terminologies dito. Hopefully, na-encounter nyo na to during your first semester or second semester of soil science. So, review na lang to. Ibalik na lang natin yung mga nakalimutan nyo before. So, biruin nyo yung uh, dalawang semester or soil science 1, soil, soil science 2. Uh, Bubuuhin lang natin siya to how many videos. So, I will try my best na ma-explain sa inyo ng maayos, sa abot ng aking kaalaman at sa abot ng aking makakaya, and sana uh, makatulong to sa inyo para pumasa kayo sa inyong board exam. So, I really look forward to hear from you. So, kilala nyo na ako. Uh, in case you have some questions, please drop a comment dun sa comment below or kung meron kayong kailangang i-clarify. So, thank you very much and see you later for the next, for the first video and for the upcoming video. So, thank you. And if you po kayo nakapag-subscribe, please click the subscribe button and it will help me a lot. Thank you. Bye. We will now begin with the first lecture 
I will be giving only lecture about soil science and the content of this video is this one. So lecture one will be about the introduction and origin of soil. Lecture two, I divided it into three presentations because it's a very, very big uh, topic. So it's all about soil formation. We have the chlorp, uh, which talks about the climate, the effect of climate, living organisms, relief, parent materials, and time uh, in the formation of the soil. Lecture 2B is all about soil formation, and that will only be talking about parent materials, kinds of rocks, and time. And the lecture 2C is all about soil weathering. So for the next lectures, I am not yet finished with my material, so I will just update this presentation later. Before we talk about soil science, let us understand first about the Earth. Earth is very unique, and it is a third planet from the Sun, and the only astronomical object known to show life, although now they are busy exploring the planet Mars. And why we discuss about Earth? Because 71% of Earth's surface is water, and 29% of the Earth's surface is land or soil. And this is very important because we will be dealing later about soil science. So this is the picture of Earth taken by the crew of Apollo 17 in 1972, which is widely known as the blue marble. So these two resources, the water and the soil, are very important as it supports life. And the problem is, these two resources are getting scarce, getting, um, the supply is not enough now as the population grows. So the population increases without increasing the land area and the food production is not sustained due to non-food land use like commercial or residential purposes. And there are a lot of human activities and calamities which became threats to these resources. So for example, the drought, forest fire, landslides, soil and ocean pollution. So because of this, we need to take care of them for us to live because we cannot live without water and we cannot live without soil. So soil is, in French, it's called sol. So that's why later on we will discuss about uh, the different kinds of uh, classification of soils. Like there's always soil at the end of the word. Like for example, oxisol, uh, oxisol, oxisol. So it's, it talks about soil. And soil is a French word. And this is a dynamic natural body composed of mineral and organic materials and living forms in which plants grow. So now, although there are some uh, hydrophonics, for example, there are now practices, agricultural practices, which minimizes or which doesn't use uh, soil. So they don't need soil. And uh, like, for example, the hydrophonics, uh, which is very, very common now. So they are growing lettuce in soil-less mediums, but then they provide a medium, which is has the similarities of the soil, which provides nutrients essential for the growth of the plants. And the soil is a collection of natural bodies occupying parts of the Earth's surface that supports plants and that have properties due to the integrated effect of climate and living matter acting upon parent material as conditioned by relief over periods of time. So, mamaya, i-discuss natin kung ano-ano yung mga factors na yun in the formation of soil. So, let us talk first about ano ba ang function ng soil? Bak ano ba ang uses natin, utilization ng soil? Bakit siya, bakit siya importante? So, number one is, soil is a medium for plant growth. Without soil, medyo mahihirapan ang mga tanim natin na tumubo. Of course, in other countries, like because they don't have much 
soil, kulang yung kanilang lupa. So they ventured now into hydroponics to maximize the potential of their area. So number one function ng soil is medium for plant growth. Second is, it serves as a recycling system for nutrients and organic waste. So pansin nyo, pag meron kayong itatapon sa, for example, sa lupa, mga nabubulok nyo mga basura or mga residues, liters, after one, one week or ilang days pa lang siya, unti-unti na siyang nadedecay, di ba? Pansin nyo, kasi it, be, it became um, decomposed. The function ng soil is home siya ng soil organism. So, nung mga bata pa tayo, di ba? Pag um, when we play nung mga bata pa tayo sa lupa, yung mga nanay natin takot na takot or galit na galit kasi nga madumi yung kamay natin. Bakit? Sinasabi natin madumi. Kasi maraming mga germs ang kamay natin pag nakahawak tayo sa lupa. So we consider the microorganisms, soil organisms as germs because soil is home or habitat for soil organisms. So ang daming nakatira dyan sa lupa na yan, one of the function of the soil. Some of those organisms are harmful. Some of them are are advantageous. So, meron din siya mga positive effect. The fourth function ng soil is came a system for water supply and purification. Now, they are uh, using soil to purify to purify water. So, tingnan nyo yung mga, tingnan nyo yung lupa, uh, yung tubig, di ba? Tubig from, from the mountain. Bakit kung minsan nakakainom tayo? Nung kami, nung mga bata pa kami, uh, we used to drink water from the tubod sa amin, yung well, yung spring, di ba? Yung cold spring or mineral spring. Doon lang kami kumukuha ng tubig na iniinom namin. And galing siya sa lupa, galing siya sa mountain. But then why it's because it very, very clear, ma malinis yung tubig? It's because soil use purify the water. So, the next function of the soil is it is used for engineering medium. Pansin nyo, ang dami-dami mga kapamilya, magkakapatid, magkakapamilya, nag-aaway because of lupa. Diba? Kung minsan nga, nagkakasakitan pa sa yung iba, hindi na nag- hindi na nag- uh, nag-uusap because gusto natin ng lupa. Gusto nang natin ng lupa. Gusto nating magpatayo ng bahay sa lupa na yan. Or gusto natin ng puno ng kung ano-ano, ng mga tanim sa lupa na yan. Kaya, nag-aaway yung mga tao. So, it is used for engineering medium. And it is one of the scarce, scarce resources nowadays. So, before yung prices per square meter is ganyan lang, after a few years, tumaas na masyado yung value ng lupa. Kasi, yung lupa is, hindi siya nag-grow. Yung distance, yung area ng lupa natin, after ilang taon, it the same, it's the same. Hindi siya nag-grow. So, and then tayo, mga tao, nag-grow tayo. So, yung kailangan nating patayuan ng bahay is marami ng lupa na kailangan nating patayuan ng bahay. And yet, yung lupa na available is still the same. Kaya, minsan, nag yung mga tao dahil gusto nilang magpatayo ng bahay, eh kulang na yung lupa. Ganyan. So, these are videos about animals enjoying a shade. It's taken in Africa and uh, doon sa ibang part ng Africa, masyadong mainit. And these elephants here and elephants are enjoying a shade under the tree. So, can you imagine kung walang tanim na puno dyan, di ba? Masyadong mainit. And even us, di ba? Ang init sa Pilipinas, kaya tayo din, masyadong umiinit din yung ulo natin pag sobrang init, di ba? So, we, we try to find shade. And now, parks are very popular kasi nga, doon na mismo nagpapahangin yung mga tao, nagpapalamig, instead na pumasok sa shopping mall. So, kung gusto mong magtipid, if there's park in your area, you can always go there and enjoy a shade under the tree. 
The other picture is about goats leaking salt and minerals from the soil. Because some animals need sodium, need nutrients, and some of these minerals are coming from the soil, which they can benefit. So this is what happened to Germany last year in 2021. So these photos are all the same. So can you imagine guys, yung area na yan after the, after the flood? So kung ilang taong, ilang taon, millions of years na developing lupa, for just less than an hour, ganyan na yung hitsura ng lupa. Kanya na yung area. So, can you imagine? So, this soil are threatened now. Hindi lang ng mga tao, kundi, kung, kundi pati na rin ng mga natural disasters. So, this is also in Germany, last year, taken. Uh, when the area was hit by a flood, nag-collapse yung the whole area. Uh, this is also in Germany. Ngayon, pag-uusapan natin ang ano nga ba galing ang lupa? What is the origin of the soil? I mentioned before that 71% of Earth's surface is water and less than 30% or around 29% of the Earth's surface is land or soil. So, di ba, ang liit-liit lang ng portion ng lupa kumpara sa tubig. And then, the Earth is composed of the core, mantle, and the crust. So, kung titingnan natin, the core means the center. And scientists think that the inner core is solid and mainly made of iron, which is very hard. And the outer core is also mostly iron, but this layer is liquid, melted iron. And then we also have the mantle. The mantle is made of rock which is very hot, causing the rock to behave a little bit like a liquid and a solid. So kung titignan mo, yung pinaka-center ng earth is masyadong mainit, which is the core, and then we have the mantle, and then we have the crust. The crust is the earth's surface layer. It is part of the earth where we, were, where we can walk, and this layer is breakable and thin. So it's around 5 to 70 kilometers deep, depending kung saan tayo naka, na, nasaan tayo. So kung, da, kung nasa ilalim tayo ng dagat or ocean or on top of a mountain. And the entire crust is just 1% of the Earth's volume. So yung crust na sinasabi natin is ito yung lupa na tinatapakan natin. The temperature of the crust increases as you go deeper into the earth. The more na pupunta tayo sa ilalim ng lupa, the more na magi increase yung temperature. And underneath the water that fills the ocean, tingnan mo di ba sa dagat? Sa ilalim ng dagat, nandun yung lupa na, ano bang tawag natin yan sa atin pag, pag lumalangoy lumalang tayo sa dagat, di ba? yung tinatapakan natin. Those are also soil and those are also part of the crust. So lahat ng yan is made of rocks. So those are part of rocks. So the crust is broken into enormous pieces called tectonic plates. Scientists believe that the crust of the earth is made up of six major tectonic plates and a few smaller ones. Tectonic plates float on the partially molten mantle and they slowly move and bump against each other at a rate of a few millimeters up to 20 centimeters per year, causing earthquakes and volcanic activity. So, kita nyo? Kita nyo? We only see the, the top the top of the, the Earth's surface layer, which is the crust. But we don't know what happened below, below sa tinatapakan natin ng lupa. And it can go beyond 
kilometers deep, depending kung saan tayo nakatapak. So that's why soils is very, very um, unique. It's very, very dynamic. What we have here in Europe may be different in other parts of the world or in Philippines, for example. That's why I find uh, soils very, very interesting and sana ganun din yung tingin nyo sa lupa. So what is the origin of the soil? The rock exposed at the Earth's surface has crumbled and decayed and that is the weathering process to produce a layer of unconsolidated debris overlying the hard and weathered rock. And this is mainly made of mineral particles, organic materials, air, water, and living organisms which works together affecting the development of the soil. So yun yung origin ng soil. So kaya may iba-ibang soil kasi depende din yung mga factors na naka-affect sa de development niya. So as the soil develop over time, layers or horizons form a soil profile. Ito yung mga iba't-ibang colors ng soil na makikita natin kung maghuhukay tayo ng lupa, makikita natin dun sa sa profile ng lupa na meron siyang iba't ibang layers. Some can be very distinct. Some medyo kailangan mo talagang suriin ng mabuti para mo makita. And those are soil horizons which are the layers in the soil. So the unconsolidated layer is called regolith which is composed of A, B, and C horizons. And the saprolite or bedrock is the underlying rock that has weathered in place to the degree that is loose enough to be dug with a spade. So, ito yung soil profile and its layer. So, kung titignan natin, uh, the soil profile is the vertical section exposing a set of horizons in the wall of a soil pit. The soil horizon is a layer of soil approximately parallel to the soil surface, differing in properties and characteristics from adjacent layers below or above it. So kung titignan natin yung picture na to, ito yung soil profile. So we have there the regolith, which is composed of O, A, B, and C horizon. And we have there the bedrock. Yung bedrock sa, sa Sabuano, sa Bisaya, tinatawag natin yung panas. When we look at the waterfall, di ba makikita natin yun yung halos uh, na carried away na ng tubig yung yung lupa, makikita natin yung, yung rock na na yung inaagusan ng tubig. So those are the bedrocks. So this is a soil pit dag exposing different soil horizon. So yan siya. So in here, most soil exhibit three to four main horizons. So we have the O, which is organic horizon. We have the A horizon, A horizon, E horizon, B and the C horizon. So later on, we will we will talk kung ano-ano yung mga difference ng bawat horizon na yan. The O horizon is called organic horizon. It is located at the soil surface, usually unconsolidated organic material made up of leaf litter, roots, leaves, and not saturated with water. So kung titignan mo dyan, meron yung very, very fine, um, maitim siya na part top soil, which is called the O horizon. The O horizon are divided into three. So we have types, three types. So we have OI. I stands for fibric material, which the plant and animal parts are still recognizable. Makikita mo pa rin yung mga natutuyong dahon, yung mga debris ng mga, ng mga sangami ng mga ano, ng animal parts na ma-recognize ma mo pa rin. But then we also have OE, horizon, which is hemic. E stands for hemic materials. These are finely fragmented residues intermediately decomposed. So although na decomposed na siya, you can still see them finely. Then we also have OA, horizon, which is sapric materials. So, these are highly decomposed, smooth, and amorphous residues. So, these are the three types of O horizon. Merong mga subscript, so OI, OE, and OA. So, then, we also have the A horizon. 
A horizon is the mineral horizon formed at or near the surface where humified organic mater matter is associated with mineral materials. So this is usually darker in colors because of the organic matter. So kung makikita natin dito, A horizon is usually darker in color compared to the lower horizon. It's because uh, the organic matter present from the O horizon leaches and goes to a horizon. Then we also have E horizon that is uh, referred to as alluvial. This is a mineral horizon just below the soil surface that has lost its silicate clay, organic matter, aluminum or iron by downward movement, leaving a concentration of resistant sand and silt particles and is usually lighter than the above or lower horizons. E stands for alluvial horizon a soil layer formed by the removal of constituents such as clay or iron, and elevation describes the process whereby constituents of the soils are removed in suspension. So if we look back at the picture, we can find here the E horizon, which is the a little bit lighter than the A and taas na horizon at saka yan yung manipis na puti na yan. Sorry, but I cannot show it to you. Tingnan nyo yung picture, meron siya sa, ta sa, baba ng, sa baba ng A horizon at saka sa taas ng medyo darker horizon. So yun yung E horizon which is alluvial, alluvial yung horizon. Then we also have the B horizon which is alluvial. It is a subsurface mineral horizon resulting from the removal of the original structure, rock structure or the washing in of material from overlying horizons like the accumulation of silicate clay, organic matter, aluminum, or iron. So, unlike the alluvial, alluvation or alluvial describes the process of accumulation of materials from overlying horizons. This horizon is often less fertile than the topsoil but holds more moisture. It generally has a lighter color and less biological activity than the A horizon. And it can be that the texture may be heavier than the A horizon. If we look at the picture, so there, so we have the Illuvia, the E horizon, and then we have there a darker, a darker horizon, C horizon. The sea horizon is unconsolidated or weakly consolidated mineral horizon that retains evidence of rock structure but lacks diagnostic properties of the overlying A, E, and the B horizon. So this is little affected by pedogenic processes. And examples including this are the beach sand or wind salt silt or alluvium deposited by rivers and glacial till deposited by glacial ice. So, yan siya. And then we also have the R horizon, which is consolidated hard or very hard bedrock. So, makikita mo pa talagang, talagang ang tigas-tigas niya. These are still rocks na hindi pa siya nag, nag, still there. They are still very consolidated. So if you see in this picture, we have here a soil profile. The subscripts are yung makikita mong maliliit na mga letters. So we have there, A is for sapric, for organic soils while decomposed. B is buried hori soil horizon. D is dense, ge geogenic soil material compacted by glacier. E is hemic or moderately decomposed organic soil. F is frozen soil, permanently frozen or permafrost. G is glade soil, um, meaning that the color is due to the low oxygen and there's a reduction of iron, so gray color. And H is the accumulation of humus or organic matter other than in the A or O horizon. I is fibric, which is organic non-decomposed. K is accumulation of calcium carbonate. M is cementation or hard indurated. N is sodium accumulation. P is plowing, only yes, uh, used with A horizon. Q is silica accumulation. This is for very weathered or old soil. R is soft rock, used with C or CR. Soft rock. C the horizon with R is means 
That's a C horizon with soft rock. S is for Sasuke oxides. It's the accumulation of iron and aluminum. Red color. SS is the slick and sides presence, which is the shiny surface on a pet face caused from soil rubbing against soil. T is clay accumulation or clay films. W is color or structure development. X is fragipan, which is a <coughs> hard, dense layer that develops with time. Y is gypsum accumulation and Z is <coughs> salts more soluble than gypsum. If we look at this soil profile, we can see here there are different layers. So, kikita natin, di ba? So, we begin with R. That is the bedrock. Kita nyo, uh, batu pa talaga siya. Dyan. And then, nagkaroon na siya ng mga small particles. So, we have there the C. The zone of least weather weathering. Least affected by soil forming processes. And then, above the C, we have the B, C. Which is the a horizon that is trans... Nag -trans uh, there's a transition between a B and C horizon. So it's more like B than C. And then above that, we have the B horizon, which is more mostly clearly exp expressed portion of B horizon, which is the zone of accumulation. Ito yung illuvial. And then we also have the BE. Transition to E. It's more like B than E. And we also have the EB Transition to B, more like E than B. And then we, ha we have there the E, which is lighter color than the above and the below horizon, which is the maximum elevation of silicate clays, iron, aluminum oxides. And we have the A mineral mixed with humus, dark colored. And we have there O horizon, which are classified into three. We have the OI, which is organic, highly, slightly decomposed. We also have the OE, organic, moderately decomposed, and OA, which is organic, highly decomposed. So all of that, until the roots of the native vegetation, is called solum. So that's the solum. So medyo, <clears throat> mahirap siyang tingnan dito guys, but then we can, this uh, looking at the soil profile will give you history. Hindi nakakapagmarites ang mga lupa. But then, if we look at the soil profile, we will understand, we can understand ano ang kanyang history, ano ang nangyari sa lupa na ganyan, and what processes na yung nag-undergo siya. So, aside from that, guys, uh, to know the soil profile, also, is a mandatory when we evaluate soils for future land use like for example uh in our case like when we are about to open a new uh, farm or a new uh, area for plantation we see to it that we evaluate the soil of the area by digging a pit to check the soil profile titingnan mo yung loop yung profile ng lupa malalaman natin diyan kung how deep is the soil and ano yung horizon na na-perform dun sa soil na yun. And in that case, it will give us an idea whether that, so that soil, that ground, is suitable for the crops that we are about to plant. Kasi kung titingnan mo yung soil profile, may mga areas na ilang meters pa lang yung, nag na, or ilang centimeters pa lang yung nadidig mo, tubig na siya. So hindi mo naaabot yung below your horizon because meron na siyang tubig na, na, na nakikita mo na yung tubig. So in that case, you can use that soil, but only for plants na pwede makapag-tolerate sa areas na, may matub na matubig. So for example, if you are going to grow saging or any, any other crops, titignan mo kung ano yung crop requirement ng tanim mo na gusto mong itanim. Kasi, Plants have different um, soil and soil depth requirements. So, may mga tanim na shallow-rooted plants. Pero namang mga tanim na they need deep-rooted uh, 
they have to be deep rooted. So, titinan mo ngayon kung ano yung soil depth mo. So, by checking the soil profile, it will give you an idea whether your soil, your area, is appropriate or pwede-pwede siyang gamitin for the crops na pwede mong, na gusto mong itanim. So, it's very, very important, guys, to, to check the soil profile if you are going to use the area for production. And also, it's also um, very advantageous kung titinan mo ngayon kung ano yung different layers ng, ng lupa, ng soil profile mo. Kasi makikita mo doon kung um, by just checking the colors, by checking the other properties of the soil, it will give you an idea whether uh, malimit ba siyang bahaan, malimit ba siyang matubigan, or baka sandi yung ilalim. Maganda yung... Maganda yung um, Ibabaw na lupa, pero pagdating mo dun sa few centimeter below, sandy na siya. So, you will, you will consider thinking, is that appropriate na sa gusto mong itanim na tanim? Major requirement siya when we are about to expand, when we are about to open a new area for expansion or kung gusto kong yung itatanim mo ay maramihan. Like for example, uh, you are going to plant how many hectares? So, dapat talangan talaga na i-check mo yung soil profile so this is a picture showing uh, the development of the soil uh, in different time at yung different uh, development ng depth ng, ng lupa so kung titina natin dyan meron dyang uh, at zero year so meron yung 100 years 1000 years and 10,000 years sa taas naman sa y axis is meron siyang depth 1 meter at saka 0 meter. So, when we are going to start at 0, year 0, yan. So, 0, 0 siya. Meron siyang fresh loose deposited. So, meron mga loose soil na na-deposit. So, 0. Kung titinan mo, yan yung area niya. Tapos, yung sea horizon, yung relatively unweathered loose are Ganyan, kahaba niya. So, 2 meters at 0 year. And then, when we move up to 100 years, after 100 years, yung relatively unweathered loose, yung sa sea horizon, nag-start na siya mag-weather. Mag, mag and then, you will see na meron siyang mapaform ngayon na thin, thin A horizon. Thin A horizon. And then, tumubo na yun siya yung mga tanim. So, syempre, pag, pag mamatay yung tanim, Organic material will accumulate. And then later on, if you move to, let's say, around maybe 500 years, so kung titinan mo yung A horizon na yan, at zero, hindi pa siya defined, well defined, but when you reach around 500 years, makikita mo na ngayon yung A horizon na nagdevelop. And after the A horizon, you can also find C, the transition of C horizon with the accumulation of calcium carbonate. So, meron yan. And as the years goes by, like for example, 1,000 years, kita mo na ngayon niya yung A horizon nagiging, nagiging ma, ma ano na din yung distance niya, yung depth niya. So, when we begin at zero year, hindi mo pa siya kita. But then when we check around 1,000 year, yung A horizon mo is maybe around 30 centimeter na. 30 centimeter or mga 40 centimeter. So, unti-unti na siyang mag-perform, guys. So, meron ka ng layering. Makikita mo na yung, yung different layers ng lupa. So, in 1,000 years, in this picture, we can see the A horizon is maybe around 30, 30 or 40 centimeter. And then, you can find there a B horizon with W. Ano nga ba yung BW? W is the color or structure development. So, there is a the B horizon with color or structure development. And then we also have there the BK, which is the accumulation of calcium carbonate. And then we have there the C. And when we move out to when we move up to 10,000 years later, kita mo yung A horizon. Med abut na niya yung almost one meter na yung kanyang depth. And then you can find there the BT, the accumulation of clays, development of blocky structure, and then yung BC horizon and siya na siya. So, and then unti-unti na rin na, so the, the relatively unweathered loose will also be 
different at that time. So this is the effect of how soil profiles are developed across time. So hindi lang siya, it's a pity, soils are formed masyadong mahaba yung time na kailangan, kailangan ma-form yung soil. And then, for us now, it's just a matter of one hour of flood or one hour of anything, calamities, or any human activities, ang daling magbago ng structure at saka ng profile ng ating mga lupa. So I hope this is clear to you guys. Uh, so this is just a, a presentation on how the soil profile changes across time. So here, this is picture is taken in Africa. So we can find here, normally sa mga roads, meron siya mga excavation. Makikita mo dyan ngayon, like, you can, meron kang opportunity na may mga canal, for example, na uh, in-excavate or any. Tingnan mo ngayon yung lupa. And then you can find there variations in the dif uh, variations or different layer formation ng lupa. So here we have the O horizon, which is organic horizon, A horizon, the B horizon, and we have the C horizon, which is the parent materials. So here is the, uh, the movement of the particles. So here we have organic matter coming from the decaying of the plant uh, plants that are grown in the area. So syempre namamatay yung mga damo, nagde-decompose siya. So after a few years, it will accumulate organic matter. And then the horizons begin to differentiate as materials are added to the upper part of the profile. So syempre, na-accumulate yung organic matter mo, but then those organic matter will not stay there for long. It will also move kasi umuulan, di ba? So pag umuulan, yung tubig na pumapasok sa lupa, kinikerry niya rin yung mga organic matter. So those organic matter will be carried downwards. So it will move to a horizon. And then later on, the clays, oxides, and carbonates will also be moving out from A horizon into the E horizon. So under certain conditions, it's usually associated with forest vegetation and high rainfall. And uh, there's a leach E horizon form between organic matter rich A horizon and the B horizon. So makikita mo yung E horizon na yan is medyo light, light yung kanyang color. And then we also have from the E from the B, we go to the C horizon and some of them are salts, for example, are carried downwards. And if sufficient rainfall occurs, soluble salts will be carried below the soil profile and perhaps all the way to the ground water. So kung titingnan mo, um, some of the rivers or some of the balloon, for example, wells natin, some of them have higher higher concentration of salts because maybe the source of the, the soil are rich in, in salts. So, nakikeri siya dun sa groundwater. So, as you can see, soils is very, very um, dynamic. So, what happened now with us, with our soil, maybe after a few years, it will be a different scenario. And this is very, very important to understand because here, the population is growing. Cropland is destroyed by urban sp sprawl, di ba? Kita natin yung most of the agricultural lands are turned, converted now into subdivisions. And new forests must be cleared for new croplands. Kasi nga, um, di ba, we wanted to ex expand our plantations, we wanted to expand our area. So yung mga lupa, yung mga forest areas before, kiniklear natin, pinuputol natin yung mga puno kasi gusto natin taniman, di ba? But then, the still the um, still the amount of cropland per person is decreasing hindi naman nag, hindi naman tumataas yung mga lupa natin but then we people are increasing so kung dati yung kailangan natin um, let's say for example like example lang to ha kung ikaw uh, before di ba yung mga mga nanay mga tatay natin yung pag pagmamay-ari nila ng lupa before daw ha sinasabi nila lahat ng lupa na makikita mo sa yuyan as long as pwede mo siyang um, pwede mo siyang taniman as long as uh, lilinisan mo siya sa iyo yan but now it doesn't it doesn't work like that now kahit nga nakatitulo pinag-aagawan pa rin diba so soil is becoming becoming very very scarce and 
it became a very, very expensive resources. And since sabi ko nga, hindi, na, hindi dumadami ang area ng soil natin, we need to understand soil to increase yield per hectare and to maximize the potential of the soil. And I hope in this lecture, sana uh, ma-review nyo kung ano yung napag-aralan nyo before in Soils 1 and Soils 2. So there are soil science, that, the field of soil science is not new. Even before, there's a lot of people who already studied soils. Like for example, Aristotle, Theophrastus, considered na niya yung properties ng soil in relation to plant nutrition. And even Roman writers discuss differences among soils in relation to plant growth. They've mentioned it in their works. So like Cato the Elder, Varro, Verhill, Columella, or Pl Pliny the Elder. And Lomonosov is a Russian that wrote about soil as an evolutionary processes. And Justus von Liebig is an, a, a German scientist. He published chemistry in its application to agriculture and physiology, in which he states, plants assimilate mineral nutrients from the soil. And through his research, through his uh, book, nag-evolve na ang mga information natin that plants uh, that plants assimilate mineral nutrients from the soil. So, galing pala sa lupa yung mga mineral nutrients na na-assimilate ng plants. And even Raman and Fallo also studied about soils in the mid-1800s. So, ang tagal na, diba? And uh, they developed agroecology that viewed soil as weathered, somewhat leach, superficial rock. So, we also have Dokochev, Aglinka, and William. So, there's a lot of people who studied soils in the early in the early years. And then we also have Hilgard, Marbo, and Smith. And they are into the soil taxonomy. Klinasify nila lahat ng mga soils depending on their properties and characteristics to advance and refine soil genesis in support of soil classification and survey. Kasi it, later on, we will discuss how important it is that classification and the effect of soil survey so when i was studying in back in 2000 ang tagal na nun guys this is my bible for soil science this is from niall brady and ray whale if you can have the book of uh, this the nature and properties it's a very very interesting book and um, this is considered as one of the Bible of soil science. And uh, when I was, uh, I took the board exam, we were the first takers. I think that was in 2003. And at that time, there were no available, not much available review material. So ngayon guys, uh, masyado kayong maswerte kasi there's a lot of available material. So please use the available material so that may nung, nung time namin, kasi kami yung unang nag-take ng board exam. Wala pang masyadong review material. So, we really relied on the books. Uh, kinuha at saka nag, naghalungkat kami ng mga notes, ng mga handouts na na-receive naman when we were studying. And I am very, very um, thankful to my mentors in UPLB like Dr. Badayos, Dr. Palingbatan, Cosico, Dr. Ray Comia, Mangkiat, Dr. Munsalud, and Kuya Juvi and Kuya Patrick who are very generous in sharing their expertise and sharing their knowledge to us. So, and because of that, because I am grateful because I got what they shared to me, I also wanted to share to you what I learned. So I hope through this video, matuto pa kayo about soil science and please let me know kung meron pa kayo mga question. So thank you very much for this first lecture and see you in my next presentation. Bye!